Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. We are glad you are here to worship with us. A couple of announcements as we get started today. Um, for whatever reason, our screens decided to go smaller than normal and we haven't figured it out. So that's why you were handed my normal big, really big type, now you see how blind I really am, pastor's plan, all right? But we'll make it work this morning and that way we're going to still have screens for people at home because they can make it however big they want to make it. So that's why we're rolling that way this morning. Today is snow day, which God graced us with some extra snow last night, which was very nice of him. Um, but we hope you will stop out after worship and either help build a snowman for the snowman building contest or do snow art, or in the very least, grab a cup of hot cocoa by the bonfire and we'll pretend that it's coffee fellowship inside, but it'll be safer because we're outside. All right. Uh, congregational meeting is next Sunday on Zoom at noon. What else? Chili dinner to go is the week after that on the 7th. So if you're watching that big football game, we encourage you to buy some chili and take it home with you and be fed that way. There is a temple talk this morning, I've been told. So I'm going to sit down and let them talk. There you go. Good morning. Um, I want to talk about a milestone that we at Bethlehem are marking. On November 17th of 2019, we met to call Pastor Amy to Bethlehem. And on January 20th of last year, we embarked on a new journey with Pastor Amy. And I think we can all agree that we have been on a journey. <laughs> Who knew what that journey would entail? We have done church in so many new and innovative ways. And I thank God that we have Pastor Amy to guide us on this journey. We challenged ourselves to five tasks that we could do to help Pastor Amy during her first year of ministry at Bethlehem. The pandemic certainly made those tasks difficult, but let us continue these tasks, which are, one, emphasize the importance of developing trusting relationships with church members. Two, providing a caring and understanding attitude as Pastor Amy learns the dynamics of Bethlehem. Three, encourage time for self so Pastor Amy can be rested and refreshed for ministry. Four, introduce Pastor Amy to peer groups that can support her in ministry. And five, encourage the importance of continuing education and the importance of continued learning to enhance our church life. And on a personal note, I was a member of both the Mission Forward team and the call committee. I believe that the Holy Spirit brought Pastor Amy to us. With the Holy Spirit's guidance and our prayers, may we continue to mark this milestone of journey together for many years. Thank you, and thank you, Pastor Amy. Jesus calls us to praise and prayer, to song and silence. Jesus calls us to worship. Jesus calls us to healing and hearing, to service and solidarity. Jesus, Jesus calls, calls us, us to, to love. love. Jesus calls us to advocacy and action, to protest and provision. Jesus, Jesus calls, calls us to, to justice. justice. Let us heed the call of Christ. Let, Let us, us worship, worship together, together with, with joy. With joy. I invite you to stand for the confession and forgiveness. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy fountain of forgiveness, the tale, the tale of, of Jonah, Jonah reminds, reminds us, us of your never-ending love for all creation. May we be like the people of Nineveh, who were able to acknowledge their sin and open their eyes to your healing presence. Though you stand ready to forgive our sin, we find it easier to bite our tongues, clench our fists, and cling to our hurts and resentments rather than let you open our hearts. 
We trust you, Holy One. We pour out our hearts to you. Receive the pain that lurks in our humanity as we offer up what we have hidden from ourselves and from the world, those words and deeds that keep us separated from your love. Hear the good news. When we repent, God, our God relents, lifting us beyond the pain, restoring us to safety, protecting us in refuge of eternal love. In the name of Jesus, who is the Christ, you, you, you are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Our opening hymn is All Who Hunger Gather Gladly. The grace of God that extends to all nations in Jesus Christ to the work of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Please pray with me the prayer of today. Almighty God, by grace, grace alone, alone you, call you call us and, and accept us in your service. service. Strengthen us by your spirit and make, make us worthy, worthy of, of your call. call. Through, Through Jesus Christ, Christ our, our Savior and Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. A reading from the book of Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, the great city, and proclaim it to the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city a three days' walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk. And he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did, he, what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. Word of God, word of life. 
Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. Our psalm for this morning comes from the 62nd chapter. We will read our psalm responsibly. For God alone, my soul waits in silence, for my hope is from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress, I shall not be shaken. On God rests my deliverance and my honor, my mighty rock, my refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Those of low estate are but a breath. Those of high estate are delusion. In the balances they go up. They are together lighter than a breath. Put no confidence in exhortation, or set no vain hopes on robbery. If riches increase, do not set your heart on them. Once God has spoken, twice have I heard this, that power belongs to God. And steadfast love belongs to you, O Lord, for you repay to all according to their work. Our second reading comes from the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 7. I mean, brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they had none and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. So I know we have kids. Do you want to sit by your parents or come up front? What's the verdict? Peyton says sit by parents. Sit by parents? All right. I'm good with that. We can all be kids at heart, right? So today, the gospel story is about fishing for people. Raise your hand if you've ever been fishing. Raise your hand if you've ever fished with a net. With a net. To put the fish in after we caught it, for sure. So back in the day, they had a much, much bigger net than this one, right? And they would throw it out and bring back what? A whole lot of fish. And Jesus said, from now on, you're going to fish for people. Do you think we should catch people in a net like this? I won't do it, Carol, I promise. That's not what Jesus meant, right? Jesus meant you can go out and tell other people about Jesus and you can catch them for God, right? So when we have things like snow day today, you could go to your friends and say, hey, my church is having snow day. Come and hang out with me and make a snowman. And you just caught somebody for God. Sound good? Do you think you guys can do that? I think you can too. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you that you first caught us so we can go out and catch others with your love. Be with us to God, today, God, in our snow day. Keep us warm. Keep us safe. We love you, God. Amen. So I invite you to stand for our gospel reading. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And he went a little further. He saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in the boat, mending their nets. Immediately he called to them. And they left their father Zebedee in the boat with hired men 
and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. I invite you to be seated. I forget I have my mask on. Do you ever do that? Not anymore? All right. Let's pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So as Teresa said this morning, a year ago this week, I worshipped with all of you for the first time. And ironic or not, my first sermon, which would have been a week from whatever that would be, like Wednesday to Wednesday or whatever, but a week ago, a year ago, my first sermon was actually this same text in a different gospel lesson. So it was the version, this time it's a version from Mark. It was a sermon on this very same calling of the disciples, the calling of Aunt Simon and Andrew and James and John. And a year ago, I looked it up, we talked about paying attention to what God might be calling us next. And then pandemic came. And then we had a staff restructuring. And then we had an organizational restructuring. And now, if you're counting, we're in our 10th month of not being able to gather fully with our whole congregation together. Lots of other things have happened, too. And a year later, now that we're back together, it feels like, to me, we're kind of beginning again. We have circled back to the calling of the disciples. The ones who hear Jesus, take their nets, drop them, and immediately go follow him. They leave their nets, they leave their father, and they head off to an adventure that they can't even begin to imagine. Three years of walking with Jesus, healing and preaching with Jesus, watching him die on the cross, to appear again to them in a locked room. What an adventure. What a life-changing moment that began right there when Jesus called them and they dropped their nets and followed him. There is not one of us here at Bethlehem, whether call committee, congregation member, or pastor, (laughs) who could have predicted this last year. When Jesus called us to walk together as partners on the journey, we could never have imagined where we'd be sitting today and all that we had experienced in our first year together. And so we find ourselves a year later, maybe a bit more weary for the journey, looking again at the future and wondering, prayerfully hoping that will be a year where we can be together with our whole church family for fellowship and worship, dreaming of the outreach that we can do when pandemic lifts within our neighborhood and within our wider community, waiting for things to open up and praying that it will be soon, that life can be back to normal, whatever that looks like, and we can once again begin to fully live out our call as a church that shares the bread of Christ with a hungry world. In so, so many ways this year, it feels like we've been waiting. Waiting to see everyone back in worship. Waiting to not have to wear masks and be able to take all the tape off the pews. Waiting as we figure out how we can offer technology that works, technology to those who can't join us. Waiting, waiting, waiting so everyone can participate. It has been, and in some ways, continues to be, a year filled with waiting. So what do we do in the meantime? In our gospel, when Jesus proclaims to the people, the time is fulfilled, the kingdom of heaven has come near, repent and believe in the good news. In that context, they were also waiting. People had been waiting for centuries for the Messiah to appear, and they didn't realize yet that he was standing right in front of them. People who had followed John, who had just been arrested, were now waiting, trying to figure out what to do next. It was a time of persecution and fear, 
It was a time of unknown and uncertainty. People were looking for someone to tell them how to live into all the emotions that they were facing. And it was into that emotional state of fear and unknown that Jesus comes and says, the time is fulfilled. God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. If we remember where in the gospel this story falls, Jesus has been baptized by John. And then he'd been sent out into the wilderness to deal with the devil and be tempted by the devil. And then he comes to this story. So baptism, beautiful story. God comes down. Wilderness, devil tempting, not such an easy story. The kingdom of God has come near. So how do we hear the words of Jesus in our world today? What guidance do we hear When he begins, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near. Can you think, if you look back at the last, I don't know, month, because it's pandemic and we don't always go places, can you think of a time that the kingdom of God has come near? Where you saw God at work bringing hope and light and life? Can you think of a place? A place where you've seen God at work in the world? I saw the kingdom of God come near last Sunday, for those of you who were here. We had a couple littles in our midst that were giggling like crazy, and you could watch people's faces because they were making all of us giggle too. It was fun to have kids in our midst. Their joy is contagious and filled everyone that was here with hope. But what about you? Just like that, case and nice, nice timing. Where have you seen God at work lately? So here's the challenge, and you haven't had me in person very often, but I like to do this because I don't need to be the only one who talks in church. So I'm going to invite you to turn to someone relatively near you, since most of you are breaking the six-foot rule anyway. And tell them one place you've seen God at work lately. Okay? Ready, set, go. Nice. That's a good one. Every day I'm inspired by God. For sure. For sure. What you got? Well, you're all still talking, so it sounds like God has been busy lately. That's a good thing, friends, that God has been at work. So the next part of what Jesus says, after he says, the kingdom of God has come near, he says, repent and believe in the, do you remember? Good news, right? So that's my question for you this morning. Do you believe in the good news? Do we? Do we live as though we have that ultimate promise that God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that whoever who believes in him, all y'all, may not perish but have eternal life? Even with all that we're facing in the world today, even with all that we've faced in the past year, 
we still have an abundance of hope. We still know that in the end it won't be disease or death or pain that wins. It won't be negativity or hurt or hate that wins. It will be life, an abundant life at that. It will be love for all people. It will be joy overflowing. We often forget that if we believe the good news, we have more joy than pain already, more hope than fear, more love than hate. We get stuck on the little things and forget the big picture that we're called to love each other, love ourselves, and love our neighbors. We forget that if we believe the good news, it is so much easier to leave the negativity behind and follow Christ into a future that is filled with promise. We forget that God has been set loose in the world to change us all for the better. Friends, it has been quite the first year together, but we can believe in the spirit that brought us together. We can believe in the spirit that encourages us to grow as one body in Christ. The kingdom of God has come near this year. We can believe and follow together. Let's pray. God of grace, we thank you that your kingdom has come near to us. We thank you for sending your son for each of us. Help us to believe that you are at work within and among us. Fill us with the joy and hope and peace that can only come from you. Give us courage, God, to believe that you are here and to follow where you are leading. In your heavenly name we pray. Amen.
I believe in God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. God of grace, we thank you, that, thank you that you for all the ways that you show up in our lives. Open our eyes to see you at work. Strengthen our belief in you. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. The church throughout the world, for pastors and teachers, for deacons and deaconesses, for musicians and servers, that all proclaim the good news of God's reconciling love. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. God of creation, we pray for skies and seas, for birds and fish, for favorable weather and clean water, and for the well-being of creation that God raise up advocates and scientists to guide our care for all the earth. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. God of mercy, we pray for those who provide leadership in our cities and around the world, for nonprofit and non-governmental organizations, for planning commissions and homeless advocates, that God inspire all people in the just use of resources. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of healing, we pray for those who are sick, distressed, or grieving, for the outcast and the lonely, that in the midst of suffering, God's peace and mercy surround them. We especially lift up to you this morning, Meyer, Steve, Dan, Julie, Brandon, Dwight, Cynthia, Betty, Antoine, Brian, Topanga, and the family of Anna Madsen. Be with all those who need your care. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of yesterday, today, and tomorrow, for our congregation and community, for families big and small, and for the organizations that meet here during the week, that God's steadfast love serve as a model for all relationships. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. At this time, we would normally share our offerings. We invite you to listen to this offering of praise by Hannah, and we invite any children in our midst children of all ages, to participate with our holy cow.
search much deeper within though the way things appear you're looking into my heart i'm coming back to the heart of worship and it's all about you all about you jesus i'm sorry lord for the Let us pray. God of light and promise, we bring our gift to further your work in a dark world. May they bring your light to those overwhelmed by darkness, pain, and loneliness. Accept these gifts of money and time, indeed the gift of our very selves. Let them shine for all to see, that all might know your love and grace. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to stand for our sending hymn.
my friends, receive the blessing. May God, the creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the comforter, surround you and fill you with peace. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Be the light of Christ. Thanks be to God.